The other day, my father asked me to bring his car from Dumaguete to Siquijor and we chose the Montenegro boat. So if you are planning to travel to Sikihor and you want to bring a car with you and you are wondering how it's done or you want to see a sample experience, here it is. Plus, I will also show to you the part which I think is very risky or dangerous. Here in the Montenegro boat or barge for a sedan, the fare rate is just 1,600 pesos with a driver included. Bigger vehicles, of course, will have higher rates. You just have to purchase the ticket at the boat's ticket outlet where you will have to present your car's registration and driver's license in there. If you have passengers, have them purchase separate tickets and they will have to pass by the port terminal and also pay terminal fees and have them wait in there and also they will have to walk from there to the boat unless your passengers are senior citizens or PWDs if your passengers are senior citizens or PWDs they may just ride in the car with you but they still have to pay terminal fees my father asked me to do this for him because he is not very comfortable at the process of boarding the car in and out of the barge here also when parking it into a specific position at the deck some boatmen's instructions are confusing. They may even have to ask you to fold your side mirrors close at some point, making you drive backwards like you are blind. Sometimes also, when the sea is rough, like in this day, the boat goes up and down unpredictably and the vertical gap in the ramp goes big and small too. And that's very stressful when you're driving a sedan or any vehicle that has small ground clearance. So I think the boatmen are... No. Deciding which cars come first, which cars go first, and which cars go next because they will need to arrange the cars in there for safety. Boss? 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 Saan ako mag-align sir? Sa may yellow? Kaya ha? Saan yung may ano? This is the part which I think is dangerous and risky. Here I realized that there are still lots of people in the deck. And I was afraid that I might be able to hit someone as I drive backwards. I experienced boarding cars to boats several times already in the past years but this is my first time doing it since the pandemic. And this is also the first time that there are still lots of people in the deck while I'm already backing the car into position. I am not sure if this is normal or someone might just gave a wrong instruction at this day. Even though the boatman would tell me to just trust him and just drive backwards as soon as he tells me to. You might not even notice if a kid would suddenly run towards the back of the car as I put gas on the accelerator. I really felt the danger so I really had to move really really slow here. 
What you can see here in the camera are the people on the left side of the car as they are in line to register at the logbook. But there are also lots of people on the other side waiting. There's even an old man in wheelchair just a few inches from the right. And some people pass by the back time to time. Maybe this is just me but I really suck at interpreting the hand gestures of parking attendants. Especially when I am driving in reverse. Example, when he signals a clockwise motion, I wasn't sure if I have to do a counterclockwise motion on the wheel since I am in reverse. It, it really gets me confused. When I drive in the city, I usually just don't mind the parking attendant's instructions. I have my own way of maneuvering the car to where I should position it. But here it's different. I don't know where I should exactly position so I just have to rely on the boat's cruise instructions. Here, the boat crew asked me to pull the side mirrors closed, so I thought I'm already done parking. But actually, he closed the right side mirrors because I will have to drive very close as in around 2 or 3 inches from something in the right. So it becomes more weird now to drive backwards where I can no longer see anything at the right. It would have been easier if the boat crew would have just told me where exactly I should position the car or if I wasn't the first one to park in this row so I would have just followed where the first car is aligned. And so I finally got the car to exactly where it must be according to the boat crew. Now I walk up to the passengers area to sit in there for a while before I might just decide to sit in the car for the rest of the trip. In the first part of the trip, I decided to just sit here for a fresher air and lesser people and to see the interesting view of the Maguete and the boat's trail or bubbles created by the propellers, whatever that's called. Halfway in the trip, I got a little seasick or dizzy so I came back to the car and sat in there, had a nap until the boat finally arrived. And so I am in Sikihor now. Later in the day, I decided that I will just stay in the island for the next 3 days to document some of the beautiful things in the island like their hidden beaches, Politan beach, caves, waterfalls, etc. I walked and jogged to my cousin's house around 2 kilometers away to get rid of the seasickness and to borrow his motorcycle so I can go almost anywhere in the island in the next few days. So please subscribe if you haven't yet and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. I am in, I'm in Luyang right now and I'm going to get my cousin's motorcycle which is at Nanok.